I'm just here to provide some high-level analyst view, uh, our own perspective on, um, on technology trends. Um, I'll be focusing on two things. I think the two takeaways from this will be, one, perhaps a, a, a understanding the balance of um, demand expectations and efficiency gains to be derived as a justification for technology upgrades. And secondly, a sort of a shift of the balance from pure connectivity towards a kind of software layer uh, within, within FTTH uh, uh, as a, uh, the principal technology driver. So, Somebody said to me yesterday, for heaven's sake, don't start your presentation with a demand forecast. So, hey, there we are, a demand forecast, a traffic forecast. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you could see and can make a good case for demand side metrics as being a driver for upgrades to FTTH and upgrades within FTTH from GPON to XGSPON and so forth. And you know, we do traffic forecasts, we do traffic analysis and traffic forecasts. And you know, on the left hand side you've got European average data usage per fixed broadband line. This isn't a fiber line, this is just fixed broadband. And the average last year was somewhere around about 350 gigabytes across the whole of Europe. It's a lot higher in some countries. It's over one over half a terabyte in some countries. But uh, that, that's, the, that's the, how it was last year. And of course, last year and the year before were pretty exceptional. And uh, as everyone knows, dr uh, fixed traffic growth, fixed, fixed data traffic grew at a super normal rate. Um, having said that, you know, there's some interesting trends within that. One is that mobile, that actually during the pandemic at least, the world stopped going mobile insofar as mobile networks' share of total traffic didn't grow. In fact, it shrank slightly within Europe. Um, so th that's an interesting trend, and we actually see long-term convergence of the growth rates of fixed and mobile traffic, with fixed being about 10 times higher. Um, uh, secondly, uh, and perhaps surprisingly, we don't see strong evidence for um, uplink growing faster than downlink. It certainly did during the pandemic. Uh, it grew uh, at a far faster rate than, than downlink. But long term, we don't see strong evidence for that actually happening. It's a good story, but we don't see evidence for it yet. Um, so, you know, we think it's prudent to sort of suggest 25% compound annual growth rate on fixed traffic, 25 to 30%, maybe something like that. We've got 29 there, but who knows? And who knows what the metaverse might throw up in terms of um, expectations and traffic. Um, what can be said for certain about the metaverse, though, is that it will be far more to do with FTTH and Wi-Fi than it ever is to do with 5G. It is, you know, it will be overwhelmingly driven and, and utilized on fixed networks. Okay, so you could make an argument to say that these demand trends translate into, into uh, a, a justification for, tra for uh, um, um, technology upgrades, both to FTTH and, and within FTTH. And that can be something of a convoluted argument that there's a, there is a comfort speed that we can identify below which um, users' average usage falls off. Um, in other words, this is the speed at which people, need, people um, have enough bandwidth more or less to do what they want. There'll be exceptions, but that's more or less it. Um, and that there is a top tier speed which is driven by customer expectations of what operators offer rather than their own personal need, which is maybe 10 times higher than the comfort speed. And on that basis, you could sort of start justifying, justifying upgrades to XGSPON, which is already underway, of course, and beyond that to 
to 25 GPON or 50 GPON in the future. But it's a convoluted argument, um, and it's one that um, involves a little bit of intellectual reverse engineering, I'd say, um, as do, do um, uh, forecasts which depend very heavily on um, an understanding of a very tech-savvy tech uh, family in the future. It's kind of a bit of reverse engineering. The reality is that inc the incremental cost of capacity of speed, uh, the capital cost, is plummeting, and that ramps up customer expectations. It continues to ramp up customer expectations. We're not really in an age where, um, where we're trying to match bandwidth with customer end user need any longer. We're trying to match it with customer expectation and operator need to be competitive in the market. Um, that doesn't mean don't do upgrades. It means it's really, in a sense, our, a, plea for, a plea to say, let's be realistic about what actually drives these technology upgrades. Now, perhaps more compelling are the arguments around efficiency okay, for upgrades, both to FTTH and within FTTH. Um, First of all, on the left, you'd have a, you know, just a simple idea of the total cost of ownership of transport of one gigabyte of data on uh, at a 40% utilized network. So you could look at 5G, a 5G with a radio upgrade, 5G with a new site, uh, or GPON with a new built ODN, uh, or a straight to XGS PON implementation. You can see that there's a huge difference. There are two, there are two orders of magnitude difference in terms of the efficiency, uh, the total cost of ownership. And that's even taking, that is a total cost of ownership figure taking into account the capital cost. Um, and uh, in terms of network OPEX, um, just network OPEX, savings on repair and maintenance, we've got a few figures there, they all mean something slightly different, but we're getting a, a view that in terms of network OPEX, you know, there are savings to be made of 50%, 70%, so forth, uh, in terms of that's really effectively network maintenance, CapEx, and fault um, troubleshooting. And that's not even including the additional, additional non-network OPEX savings you might make from lower churn or something like that. That, that amounts to maybe 30 to 50 euros per year, per line, per home passed. So, you know, pretty significant changes. And bottom right, we've got um, power consumption per, per, per uh, connection, um, divided into network and CPE. Um, and, you know, power consumption on fixed networks is never the largest element in uh, an integrated operator's environment. Mobile consumes far more power than fixed does, whether it's copper or fiber. Um, but uh, you can see quite clearly how, how the efficiency, uh, and this is really important in the context not only of, of, of the green agenda and sustainability, but also just in terms of the, the, the massive uh, spikes in, in energy prices and volatility in energy prices at the moment. This is really very important. So I'd say, you know, technology choices have to be based on a little bit more than customer, uh, customer demand. Customer demand and is part of it. Competitiveness and efficiency are, 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 are just as important, if not more so. Um, so, um, I think it's pretty clear where we're heading at the moment, uh, uh, and that's kind of ubiquitous, ubiquitous fiber connectivity to the home, or very near ubiquitous, you know, really high 90s uh, uh, connectivity. You know, there's been a, if you look back over 15 to 20 years, the proportion of households that people thought weren't, that operators or uh, policymakers thought weren't viable for FTTH, uh, or sensible recipients of, of, of public funding for FTTH, that's continued to shrink. And if you extrapolate those trends, it's going towards zero. Uh, we would expect in the end pretty much every premises in Europe to be passed by FTTH. Um, and that means copper to FTTH, 
uh, upgrades, of course, and that's already well underway. It means HFC to uh, uh, FTTH upgrades, which is beginning to happen in earnest. In the last two years, we're seeing a lot of cable operators making that bold decision to upgrade to, to, to FTTH. Not all of them, and not, 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 not consistently across the world, certainly. Um, and I think there's a third element of that. We would actually see in the long run FWA to uh, FTTH upgrades in those areas where FWA is deployed uh, as a lower cost substi substitute for, for FTTH at the moment. So we'd see 5G, 5G's role in fixed line shrinking a long run. Um, so, um, and it's pretty clear where operators need to be. They need to be, uh, 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 they, they need to be, by the end of the decade, they sort of need, need to be industry best in terms of performance, uh, uh, resilience, OPEX, environmental impact. You know, they need that picture to be, they need a, a roadmap to that, to that end point. Um, so, in a sense, where are the uncertainties? You know, perhaps we've reached a point where there aren't uncertainties. I'd say, well, there are actually two major sets of uncertainties. One is still how we get there most efficiently. Now, that's a mixture of business models. It's a matter of regulation. It's a matter of policy. And it's a matter of technology choices. But in particular, the business models is about, you know, how you, whether it's a wholesale uh, open access model, a wholesale only model, a vertically integrated model, or so forth and so forth. Even when it comes down to wholesaling, what do you actually sell? Is it layer one? Is it layer two? Is it layer three? Is it uh, a network as a service, a sort of softwareized version of that? These are these are important. Uh, these are important considerations, um, and there are technology choices involved in that. Um, the second major set of uncertainties is how we make best and fullest use of those networks once they're in place. And I think that's largely around technology choices. So to put a bit more color on that, you know, these are the, I was asked to talk about technology here, not, not business models particularly. So. Uh, um, these are the sets of technology choices we understand. The three on the, the right-hand side, from 12 o'clock down to 6 o'clock, as it were, are, are ones around how we, how we get there. Um, the ones on the, from 6 o'clock up to 12 o'clock are about, really about how we make best, best and most efficient use of what we've actually already got. Um, so, there are build and plan aspects to this and technology choices that are, that, that are there in terms of capex minimization and avoidance, the use of software, maybe prefabrication, maybe not. You know, there's a, there's a TCO argument around that, um, which, is, which is complex. Then, of course, there's the roadmap for the access technologies themselves, which are you know, clear. We've mentioned those before. The roadmap for XGS PON, 25, 50, 100, GPON, the use of coherent uh, technologies for, for uh, mobile transport, even within that as well. Um, then there's the choice of the indoor network uh, infrastructure and technology, usually revolving around Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E, Wi-Fi 7, uh, use of cloud management and so forth, but also increasingly thoughts around, it, especially around the, the F F F 5G vision of fiber to the everywhere, fiber to the room, the densification of the network within uh, properties, within, of the fixed network within properties rather than reliance on wireless, of passive optical LANs within an enterprise or, or um, um, business environment. Those are important technology choices. But perhaps the most important choice really long run is the software layer, the network control, the readiness for new cases that might come along. The readiness for new B2C, sh sudden shifts in B2C demand around latency or jitter for virtual reality services or something like that, some unexpected shift that might come along, but also readiness for novel use cases, for non-B2C use cases, um, 
where virtual network operators um, have um, can architect the, the network for new services for other pr virtual network um, operators to provide, allowing them to create and tune services according to their needs without the intermediary of a, a whole set, uh, without the um, uh, operational intermediary of a wholesale operator in its catalog of services. And as a final part of the jigsaw, um, uh, the there's a sort of uncertainty in where we're, where we're heading is, is the integration with other parts of the telecoms network, the FTTH network with other parts of the telecoms network. Now, I heard yesterday somebody saying, we shouldn't talk about FTTH plays, we should talk about fiber infrastructure plays. And it's about you know, how you integrate that FTTH part of the part of the equation with the other parts of the fiber network, and indeed, actually, for integrated operators, how you best integrate that with the cellular network. And as a final thought on that, you know, perhaps we're heading to a less sort of mobile-centric vision of, uh, 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 of, uh, of telecoms networks in the future, um, where we're heading perhaps towards a, a world where there is a, the possibility of a more efficient and more sustainable mix based on what is efficient of uh, 5G or 6G, future 6G of FTTH and Wi-Fi. So that's my conclusion. So thank you very much.